Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Steve Lott from Anaplan's Education and Government Practice. This webinar is another installment in our continuing series of wholly customer-driven events that will be available for viewing after each session. We're creating a library of customer stories told in their voices that can be leveraged by and benefit the wider higher education community. This is a drastic and needed departure from how this important market has traditionally been served. We're very grateful for the support of our customers and in how well Anaplan continues to be received across all segments of higher education as more and more institutions continue to place their confidence in our platform, our approach, and in our partners. It's this unique combination that's resulted in such rapid acceptance by this open and sharing community. All segments, public, private, large, small, community colleges, medical centers, and even systems all now want to tell their Anaplan stories. Our customers have great stories and want to tell them. This webinar, again, is part of an ongoing series that will rightly remain completely customer driven. As in the case today, many of these schools will actually show portions of their Anaplan applications as they share their experiences. If you miss a session or even just want to view it again, you can register and view it on demand. There'll be a different link made available for that purpose. You can also visit our website. If you find these stories to be useful, please pass on the link to those you might think might similarly benefit. So today we're going to go through introductions, talk about Tarleton, and then look at what their objectives and uh, the background of Tarleton is, and then work our way through both about uh, Anaplan Analytics, and then finally look at how Tarleton is deploying um, Anaplan today. And then finally, we'll wrap with questions and answers. At this point, I'd like to introduce Curtis Grads of Analytics. Curtis? Hi, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm uh, Curtis Gratz, uh, Director of Analytics. I've uh, been in consulting for a little over 15 years and 10 years uh, directly servicing the needs of higher education. Um, I oversee our higher education vertical and help uh, colleges and universities improve processes, including uh, budgeting, budgeting and planning, LRP, uh, contribution margin and program analysis, all the way to what we're discussing today, facilities and space usage optimization. Uh, Dr. Barkley? Hey, Jordan Barkley. I am the Associate Provost and Associate Vice President for Academic Administration at Tarleton State University in the Division of Academic Affairs. Hi there, I'm Lori Beatty. I'm the Chief Financial Officer and the Vice President for Finance and Administration here at Tarleton. And I think I get to tell you a little bit about Tarleton now. So Tarleton is located in, um, our main campus is located in Stephenville, Texas, which is about an hour southwest of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And um, we have six location, instructional sites, so six locations. Um, our enrollment, um, the number there is 13,000. 176. We um, have actually seen a little bit of growth uh, since then and, and we'll be very near the 14,000 mark uh, this fall if numbers hold during this crazy time. Um, we offer a hundred plus different programs ranging uh, from, from a small number of associate degrees to two doctoral pro programs and launched, launched our first PhD program in criminal justice last fall. Um, let's see, I think Curtis wants me to tell you a little bit about our goals and our goals as a university um, are academic excellence, student transformation, distinctive engagement, and exemplary service. And all of those goals require space. And so the thing that we're going to talk to you about today is how we're using Anaplan to manage the space utilization um, on our campus. When we started this project, um, we really had two, two goals in mind. One was to provide additional insight into how our space was being used, um, both campus-wide, at our different locations, and then also all the way down to uh, specific classrooms. The other thing that we were looking for was a way to run scenarios to, so that we could make better decisions around the usage of our space. Um, in, our, in our student system and catalog system, we really couldn't see the impact to our space utilization efficiency score until after everything was over. And so what Anaplan is allowing us to do is to run scenarios before we make those decisions to see what our scores will look like.
Dr. Corey, Buckley? I, think this, I was going to say, I think this is me. So yep, this is, I think it's your me. turn. All right. So I, um, full disclosure, walked into this position um, a little over 12 months ago, um, not expecting COVID or anything like that to happen and um, really just worried about space in general on campus. And so inherited a lot of the work that had already begun with uh, one of my employees at the time who was a manager of space here on campus. Um, so I, I, I just want to point out that in our current situation, we have a, we have a campus or campuses where everyone um, values space, but everyone feels ownership, but no personal responsibility for managing that space. And that's not uncommon on a college campus. Um, everyone needs a classroom. Everyone needs a space to hold an event. Um, but but rarely do you have one central central group that manages it in such a way that um, everyone's opinion, everyone's idea can be taken into consideration. And so that's what we wanted to do. Part of this um, was, as the slide says, it's the largest addressable asset that we retain um, control of, but it can get a little unwieldy. And so um, <clears throat> What's going on in our world right now is we're seeing an end to the traditional brick and mortar space um, market and that whole adage of if you build it, they will come. That's that's over for us. And so we know if we want to do any sort of capital improvements, if we want to build new structures or spaces, we have to prove that we're efficiently using efficiently using the spaces that we have. And so we must demonstrate um, true need coupled with efficient use of our current space, which has proven difficult in some of our situations. And so in my role, I, I primarily um, interact with um, the, the coordinating board, Texas Education, Higher Education Coordinating Board, um, and we are required to report our a space utilization score or the SUE score, that group. Um, every fall and so spring is kind of a freebie for us that's when we actually play around with things on campus and see if we can in the past when we could move things and see if we could do things to influence the SUE score for the next year um, so aside from funding decisions internal to the Texas A&M University system we have the coordinating board and also the legislative board that impact space for higher education here in Texas and so we needed a space projection model that would help us help leaders on campus understand exactly what we were doing with space, how we were utilizing space, and if we're being honest, how we were underutilizing space, particularly uh, learning spaces. Um, and so I mentioned the, the space utilization score. So the SU score is reported every fall. That score is, is calculated using data from three of the reports that we send to the coordinating board that come from a um, data management group here on our campus um, and they focus on demand utilization and percent fill which are key for us and so there's there's no shortage of a discussion of of demand for space on campus in fact if you ask the average faculty member they will say oh we have a greater demand than we actually have available space those of us who look at the space management would argue, no, we do not. We actually, um, in, I just shared in the meeting that I just left that we've reduced the capacity on a lot of our classes to account for COVID capacities with student, the number of students. So many of those classes are down to 50% occupancy and we still manage to get 75% of our three day a week classes into a classroom space on this campus where they can meet every day for three days which means if you're looking just holistically, there, there are certainly lots of instances where we have more space than we have de demand for it, which leads a person who's informed to understand we probably are not planning as efficiently as we could. So we have people utilizing spaces in, on days and times and in certain blocks of times that are not ideal or efficient. So what does this mean for us? Um, it means that if we do not effectively manage space, I cannot walk down the hallway and talk to the CFO who's on this call with me about how do we approach um, first our Board of Regents and then ultimately the coordinating board and the, the government here in Texas about building new structures. 
Um, we have to have reliable data to make informed decisions. Um, we can't just have, which we have in the past, have people decide we need a new building, we need this, we need that. We actually need um, evidence to support either that claim or to refute that claim and go back to the claimants and say, let us talk to you about how we can more efficiently use the space that we have here on campus. Um, when we don't efficiently use space, we, it, it, we end up with lower state funding. Um, we, we have fewer um, capital projects that get, get approved. Um, and I know as the slide says, there are other, other states across the United States have similar formal or informal evaluation criteria. And so when we um, talk about how we can impact the Sioux, we were manually calculating this every, um, every spring into the fall term when it was time to report this information. And so I had an employee who worked for me who would essentially manually manipulate um, the, the capacity on rooms, move. I had an office that was also responsible for moving classrooms from location to location on a spreadsheet. And so what this space planning model allows us to do is to input all of our space information into the modeling software, and then we can go in and make changes to it and forecast where, where do we have classes that are offered when they're supposed to be or when they're not supposed to be. Um, how can we make simple adjustments and, and more efficiently utilize a class? Do we have outliers that we need to pull back in and reschedule and put them in different places? And so the benefits, um, are, are apparent to those of us who are in the space business. Obviously, the more efficiently we use our space, the more state funding we could possibly receive approval for. Um, this definitely decreases our facilities and maintenance costs. Um, there's a general attitude that all businesses on campus are always open and, and um, it doesn't cost us any more money to do something because the lights are on and buildings need to be cleaned. But that's actually not entirely true. Um, and those, those of us who are in the planning Part of this, understand that if we can centralize where those classes are housed and we can push things in certain directions, it's certainly more cost effective. Um, this definitely makes us a better steward of the state and university resources. And just like every university across the United States right now that's facing funding cuts, we must prove to the state government, but also the federal government and our stakeholders that we are, we are good uh, and fiscally responsible with the money that we're receiving. Um, and then ultimately, all of that's nice, but in my role as associate provost, my ultimate goal is for us to serve the students as best as we possibly can. And so this product also helps us move from the notion that we're just going to build a schedule and students will register for things. This allows us to put that information into the model and then we can, we can then inform department heads, actually based on what your students need, Here's when you could offer these classes and you could most efficiently use the, the time, the classrooms and the space. So the, the key takeaways for me, and again, I inherited this project. Um, I, I do want to point out that in a recent restructuring here on campus, we've actually decided to create an office for um, academic scheduling. And I have put those individuals in contact with Curtis and his team because I, I just see how this product is going to drastically improve that manual labor intensive piece of work that they were doing. Um, it's going to make us far more keenly aware of, of, of where our spaces are, what we're doing with our spaces, how we're efficiently using some, over relying on some, under relying on lots of spaces. Um, it's, it's certainly a, a much better. Uh, way of approaching space and space management than that we've than we've ever had. Um, it makes external reporting much easier. This the product itself was built with reporting out to this to the coordinating board in mind, and so the old manual um, manipulation of the Sioux report so that we played around with it to get to the magic 150 that we needed to hit. Um, we can we can actually we can automate that and we can do that with this tool. So the reporting piece will be better. Um, as far as workforce alignment, this I'm hopeful will allow us to start to to let to take a leveled approach at attacking this. So speaking with the deans first, and then the department heads, and then ultimately with the faculty, and helping them understand that when you take a look 
a deep dive into how space is managed and how we could be better utilizing space on this campus, we can make smarter decisions about what we're doing with our classrooms and labs and how we're using them and when we're using them. And then obviously, I on the future, I know my, my colleague, my CFO who's on here, that, that is what this institution is committed to doing. We, um, are, are, we've tightened our belt several times. Um, in fact, I don't know how many more notches we can pull that belt in. So we're, we're just at a critical point to where if we're going to ask anyone for money to do anything on this campus or one of our other campus locations that are also growing, we're gonna have to prove that we are super efficient at utilizing what we already have. So what we're hoping to be able to use with this rescheduling toolbox is when we, we, put, we input the information into the tool, then we are able to reorganize schedules, um, split sections when we need to, combine sections. I mean, we, we talk a lot on this campus about splitting sections that get to be large. We don't talk nearly enough about perhaps combining some sections that are too small, which would allow us to, to better utilize our space. Um, we the the rebalancing the section enrollment, um, repurposing and reallocating non-instructional space. All of the, the the dashboard and the toolbox allow the space utilization office or the academic scheduling office to um, make the informed decisions that they need to get us up and running. For this. Great. So. I'm um, unmuted. So, so great. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you through Tarleton's model at a, at a high level and we'll walk through some of the capabilities that they have, keeping in mind, you know, what the, the overriding goals are and understanding what some of those toolkits are. I know uh, Jordan talked about splitting sections um, for some, for instance, right now, I think that that's you know, prime, uh, fairly decent importance for 25% uh, of sections that um, can't really be, um, they're over enrolled for a COVID environment. It sounds like the other 75% at, at Tarleton can be managed or possibly, possibly combined depending on the usage of space. And that's partly what we're going to talk about today. So keeping in mind the goals of, you know, insight and running scenario, what we're gonna talk about is what does the model do? Well, what we've created is a process and a, a technolo technolog technological model that allows Tarleton to you know, manipulate the data and proactively manage the SU score and schedule courses um, at optimal times or prime times and reorganize or combine sections, hopefully in the future once we're through this COVID um, uh, virus issue, and able to really efficiently use space. And what we are, what this allows us to do is number one, understand what the SU score will be for the, the fall semesters, which is when the THECB submission occurs, as well as being able to monitor and understand what the uh, SU score would have been for spring semesters for internal reporting and review purposes as you're scheduling courses. Um, you know, having that data at the room the school room building section across Tarleton, um, dashboards that can be distributed and make things a little bit easier than um, the, the current situation at Tarleton um, where you know, there's a lot of, lot of it, making it a little less unwieldy and improving the process so that they can make really those informed discussion, the decisions. Um, and really what we're, we're talking about doing, and some of this is gonna be COVID related and some of it, you know, that's, that's very tactical right now. Um, but longer term, this, this process and model can also be leveraged uh, in the future uh, in a post-COVID env environment. So when we're talking about the levers that we are going to be pulling are, you know, adding or removing sections, adding or removing um, even buildings or rooms, um, taking, you know, if we're talking about combining sections, maybe that means that we can eliminate um, a room or there's a building that's underutilized and we can you know, move the sections from that building to another building. Um, taking, you know, in a COVID, COVID environment or even a you know, longer term, you know, for moving sections from on-site to virtual um, and also incorporating social distancing guidelines or, you know, benchmarks for uh, capacity constraints. You know, I, I believe, you know, in a pre-COVID environment, the 
square footage per student was somewhere around 15 to 20 students or sorry uh yeah 15 to 20 students and i believe in a COVID environment somewhere between 35 and 40 typically so there's there's vast constraints on that um, and then just being able to combine all of these um all these levers into multiple different scenarios so we're going to show uh run through some of the capabilities here actually right now so we'll, we'll show you some of the capabilities some of the SU score and then get into you know actually managing and manipulating the the schedule uh buildings and rooms um at Tarleton. so let me change the application i'm showing and can one of the panelists confirm that they can see my screen I can. Yeah, we can. Turn. Okay, great. So what we've done here is we've logged into Anaplan. Um, so Anaplan, just a just to give a overview, Anaplan is a, a pure SaaS uh, mo modeling platform that can be um, accessed through any HTML5 browser as well as uh, some mobile applications as well. Um, what we have here is uh, the Tarleton facilities, uh, space and maintenance. Uh, deferred maintenance uh, landing page. So we, we, we do have this model actually combined with uh, facilities, deferred maintenance and capital requests, but really where we're gonna be spending our time is on the um, SU score um, and space efficiency dashboards. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into the SU scoring assumptions dashboard to help you understand and give a provide an overview. So everything that we access here is driven off of dashboards. So we've created interactive dashboards. Now, I don't think this is going to change anytime anytime soon, or maybe it will, but what we have in here is the SU scoring model um, as determined by this THUCB. So we've got this in here as a refresher in case anybody wants to pull it open and see how we're calculating um, the information and why something's calculated a certain way. So we have links to the external document for the THUCB and the uh, SU score calculation. And we also have incorporated various SU score standards. So these are the standards prescribed by THECB, you know, minutes per class, um, number of meetings per week, classroom minutes per hour. Now, if they were to, you know, change some of the standards, so say change it from 50 minutes um, per hour to say, you know, a full 60. You'll see how that actually changes our SU score by building. So we have these SU score, so the usage efficiency score actually calculated down at the building and actually at the section and room level as well. So um, this can be pretty helpful because what we also have here are some Tarleton State University standards around you know percent fill acceptance criteria and minimum headcount. So if a section isn't filled to 65%, we've created um, dashboards that help manage that and bring those to the forefront so that maybe we can combine the combine those sections with other um, sections or trying to understand what we might be able to do in order to get this at a more desirable time or um, bringing together additional sections to to make that a higher fill rate um, in addition to that we also have all of the um, demand scoring tables so if anything does change uh, from with the guidance from THECB we we can easily update that um, pretty seamlessly. So with that, what I want to do is I want to go into the THECB dashboard. And now what we have here is a dashboard that shows, you know, if we look at the you know graph of space usage, the actual classrooms in use at any given time, you know, a lot of this information will will tie pretty similarly and look pretty similar to the information that is provided by to by Tarleton to THUCB to allow for that kind of proactive reporting. So just a different view of this, the same information. So we have those grids, we have the, the, the tables across the top. So as we get into that, you can see how this kind of comes to the comes to the forefront and we can actually see what we're trying to do both on an actual and if we wanted to say look at you know FY FY19. We can go in and see what FY19 looked like or FY19 for spring. We can easily go in there, select drop downs, look at our historical information, see you know when you know students are taking classes. 
and when our classes are actually when our sections are actually scheduled including for the summer schedule so with that what i want to do is i want to go into kind of our sue overview dashboard so what this allows for is to see kind of a heat map you know by a particular term for a given year to be able to see what our SUE score is by building for both class and class lab. So this allows us to, to really see and drill down into what's driving the numbers. So if anything jumps out, we can go in and correct it. Cause I know that we found some items where there were, um, admit where there were issues where the capacity might be too high for an enrollment. I believe like one example is we had a capacity of 150, but there was only one student enrolled in, in it. Um, so there was an obvious error. So we had, had we correct that in Banner to make sure that we are reporting the right information and um, being able to proactively manage and make sure that we have all the information correct before we submit it to uh, THECB. Um, in addition to that, what we have is classrooms and class labs and the various components. So um, Dr. Berkeley talked about our class two score. So broken out by demand, by utilization and by uh, fill rate. So we have the ability to see, you know, by building, what are the what are our fill rates? What are our demand rates? So if we look at our math building for classrooms, so these are classes, these are class labs, they each have different criteria and you can see what the scoring is. Um, on each of them. So, and if you look down below, what we also have is by classroom and class lab, we have the ability to select, in this case, the math building and actually see what the SU score is for each of these, each of these actual uh, rooms themselves. So I can tell that my mathematics building room 208, this has a class SU score of 100 and a fill rate of 83%. So if I were to drill into that, I want to make sure that the number is correct. I can go in, drill down into that information and see my, you know, percent fill, my students and my capacity. So I can actually see who's enrolled in this, in these class, in the sections that are in this room as I drill down. And then I can get down to my section level detail that's provided from Banner. So from there, what we can do is actually go down and continue forward and go into my you know, various room and section elements. So if I go into my room details dashboard, so we went into that, we went into you know, 509. So as you notice, everything updates to only show 509 since that's the mathematics building that we are in. I can actually pick any building that I want in, in, um, within Tarleton. I'm gonna stay on the mathematics building. And we have the ability to actually see each room. And so if we wanna you know, select room 108 and see what the SU score is, if I continue looking down or if I pick room 208, I can see what my capacity is for that room, students, meetings per week, et cetera, and how my SU score is being derived for that room. And down below, I can see every section that is being taught within this room within this room so i have building 509 room 208 i can tell that history section uh, 1301 is being taught at 6 30 p.m to 9 30 p.m total minutes capacity total students you know we have 100 percent for that that class there's two meetings per week so this gets into under helping understand how the sue is being calculated so that kind of helps us you know understand a little bit more information. Now, if we want to continue driving through to this, we can go to our percent fill dashboard. And well, before I do that, I actually want to showcase that we also have the ability for this room to, you know, pull in class laboratories. So in this case, there's only five different class lab rooms, but you can see, and these are all calculated slightly differently. So that can be important as well, just kind of filter the information down a little bit. So going a little bit further and driving into that percent fill, because if you remember, we talked earlier about, um, we talked about being able to really understand what the Tarleton State University acceptance criteria were. So on that initial dashboard that had the, you know, the, the standards set by the coordinating board, 
we have our own standards. So if we want to go in and say we want to our percent fill acceptance criteria, say we want to, you know, set this to 50 percent. What you'll notice is that now I have a number of additional sections in this column. If I change this back to 65, you'll see a number of these courses will not meet the minimum criteria now. Or if I change this to 70 percent, you know, even more um, do not meet the minimum criteria. So this allows us a proactive management tool. Um, if we also want to go in here and see our minimum headcount, we can go in and say, well, we need to have at least I don't know, two students. So now, you know, we have a number of rooms and sections that probably have like one student in them. So we can see who um, is really what classrooms are being used and what courses are are really causing any any possible issues in the SUSCOR score calculation. So if we look down below, we can see that this meets this minimum criteria, but does not meet this. It's because we have so few students here and you know, our percent bill for one section This, um, I don't know, actually know what that one is, but the percent bill is only 21% for that particular session. So if I change this back to 10 and back to the Tarleton State Standards, go in here and then you'll see how that updates and provides a uh, proactive way to kind of manage the various sections and have discussions with the dean as well. So kind of moving moving forward, this gets us into more of our ability, you know, to, to from where we are currently, we've kind of talked through how the how we got there and what it looks like from a historical basis. And you know, as we're managing and proactively planning, this is where we start getting into our scenarios. So what we're going to do next is actually go into our scenario management dashboard. And this is where we can go in and start playing with and updating and reordering the schedules, splitting classes, splitting sections, combining sections, and items like that, that really provide a lot of power to proactively manage the, the SU score. So for example, I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna go into scenario one here. So we have the ability, number one, to create new scenarios. I'm not gonna go through that, I'm gonna go through and update an existing scenario that um, we haven't made any updates to, um, but we can create as many scenarios as we want and make any of these updates that we're making to the model itself. So if I change this to fall of 21. So for the coming year, if we go in here and say, well, now we have to deal with capacity constraints. So we can one by one go through, and we actually looked at, um, doing capacity by square footage. However, due to you know a lot of the class labs, there was a, a lot of additional information that may not have been cataloged at, at a given point in time. So it didn't prove pertinent to, to set it up on a blanket square number of square feet per, um, per student or possible enrollee to limit capacity. So we can go through one by one and update these, the, the um, capacity override. What I'm going to do just for the sake of showing the impact um, across the model is I'm just going to select and make this a capacity override of 20, 20 uh, students per room. So as I go through here, I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to paste it down to every room in the engineering unit. So I, I believe Dr. Barkley said that it that it ended up being around 50%. So in some cases, this is going to be below 50. Some cases are going to be a, above. But everyone should get the idea because what's going to happen is our engineering um, building SU score in this case, because we're actually just limiting capacity, it actually impacted our SU score to uh, increase it from 60 to uh, 106. I think it was like 66% for the incoming fall uh, semester. Now, I'd, and here's where you can actually graphically see that. So if I look at 993 engineering, which was the building we were updating above and limiting our capacity, we have 106 now overall score for engineering when we had 74. So down below, we, we can get into our section planning. And this is where we look at individual sections in, indiv in specific rooms. So if we look at building 993 or sorry, building 993 room 142, we can tell that based upon our updated capacity constraints, we actually have an issue. We have 28 students enrolled 
in this in this section, so engineering three through three six, um, and we need to reallocate. Um, so we go in here and we override the number of students. And you know this is probably a little simplistic, but we'll be able to proactively manage that and work with the students to actually know where we need to reallocate these students. So if we go in here and we change the students in this section from 20 to 20 from 28, and we go in, what you'll notice is that comes off and we're going to say I'm going to move, uh, I need to take get eight students, so I'm going to add, I don't know, five to this section, so I'm going to make this 18, and then I'll add another three to this section. Now, if I need to, you know, change the um, day of week, so if I need to change that, I can actually do that as well, because we have the options where we have two, four, which is Thursday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, um, just on Tuesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, or we can actually change the start time of the individual section itself. So that allows us to reorganize the, the sections. Now, the next thing we can go into and really you know, impact is really going in and seeing, and I'm gonna use these actions again, and go into our section and, and room maintenance dashboard. That allows us to better manage through what we're doing. So if we want to go in and actually say this, instead of doing what we did, which was moving students around, maybe we can actually just change the building and we have to work with faculty member on that. But maybe we could move the building to a room or the, the section to a room at the same time that has higher capacity. And then that would just solve, solve the issue because say that room has a capacity of 60, we can fit those 28 students into that room at that time. So that's, a, that's, a, that's one option that we have that allows us to run this. Or maybe that section actually can just be um, pulled offline. So if we uncheck this box, we could make this a virtual section, which is another option that we, we another lever that we have to pull here. Um, in addition to that, we can actually go in and start adding buildings. So over here, I have my various room areas. Um, in, in this area, I, have, I can pick a specific scenario and I can pick a building and I can add a room number. So say we had a, a non-instructional space that we could reallocate um, and create a new room out of, we can do that as well. And there, and have and update that with the correct capacity. So that's another option that we have, another level we could pull and then go and move that section to that room or split that section and move it to move half the students to that room. So that kind of gets us to some of the capabilities that we have within the platform and really being able to see, you know, and iterate through what we're doing here. So if I go look in, into this and I look at my afternoon schedule, I can go ahead and see by building what room has what section enrolled. So as I'm going through and looking to possibly reschedule and I'm looking at my prime time sections, I'm looking at under, uh, prime times and I'm trying to understand what is on grid versus off grid um, and might be you know, blocking another section from, uh, might be actually taking up you know, three sections because it's off grid. We can actually go in here and understand that and use this as a mechanism to better allocate our sections across our various times. So with that, what I wanted to do is, as we go back and we look at our, our SUS4 overview, this kind of brings us to the ability where we can see, now we have our engineering building higher up the list at 106 versus um, where we were if we look back at, um, say, FY20. where we added down to 74. So with that, that was actually what I wanted to show, um, just some of the capabilities of the platform, being able to you know, really have that, that toolkit to be able to, to more effectively and proactively run scenarios and manage both uh, space utilization as well as um, understanding what the C score uh, could potentially be 
before actually submitting it to the uh, coordinating board. So with that, what I wanted to do was uh, turn it over to pretty much uh, open it up for Q&A. Um, so just wanted to see if there is, uh, if anyone had any questions or um, for myself, uh, Lori or Jordan or, or Steve as well. There's no questions that have been posed at the time and no one has their hand raised yet, but we'll give everyone another minute or so. Yeah, so, so just, to, just to kick things off, um, what, Dr. Barkley, what uh, systems are you currently using um, or were you currently using to, to manage this? I figure that's something that I think it's probably somewhat similar to a lot of other schools. So um, we, our main reservation system was at Astra. So we have all of our rooms loaded into that, to that program. Um, that helps with scheduler. Banner is what we use to manage our student data. And so um, our, our class learning environments are lo loaded into Banner for scheduling purposes. Um, and then that feeds the CBM reports that go up to the coordinating board. Um, but I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say that, so they would export all of that out of Banner, they would pull from, um, from the other space utilization piece, put it into Excel, manipulate it, and then we were using some Adobe software to, to put it into reports that made it more, more attractive and easier to understand for people. So this is far more sophisticated than anything we've had. All right, so we do have some questions coming into the chat. Um, the first question is, is space utilization the only usage of Anaplan at Tarleton State? So this I, I can say that that's what we're doing with it out of my office, but Lori's on the call too, and I think that there's a plan for it to be used for other things. Yes, so we have several models um, built in Anaplan. Um, we originally built a budget planning model um, based on our historical incremental budgeting process and um, we had a new president that joined us just almost a year ago and asked us to shift to zero base budgeting. So we've now quickly shifted our model within Anaplan to accommodate the zero base budgeting process. We also have a contribution margin um, model built in Anaplan that allows us to um, uh, combine the um, class class size by or I'm sorry semester credit hours produced by department um, to the expenses for that department and come up with a contribution margin um, and we can do that by department or by college or look at the university as a whole so those are some of the things that we're using it for right now yeah, and um, I guess to elaborate on that as well, you probably saw in the model there was a deferred maintenance in facilities. Um, we were in the process of rolling that out before, uh, right when COVID uh, <laughs> hit. So, uh, yeah, that's it's in place. Um, I think the the priority kind of shifted a little bit um, right as we were deploying that. Great, and the next question is, when did Charlton? States start using Anaplan? So Curtis, I think the space part started before I started this position last July, is that correct? Or was it, when did you all start working with RC on that, that piece? That was uh, early last fall. Um, we, we probably wrapped up the reporting piece of this uh, towards the end of last year. So looking in the, I want to say December timeframe, and then uh, probably starting in March or late February, we started um, working on the scenario aspect in order to more proactively manage the um, space utilization and scheduling at, at Tarleton. But we've been using Anaplan for several years. Um, we started with the incremental budgeting model. 
And I want to say that was probably 2018, summer of 18. I was going to say two to three years, so that, that's about right. Okay, and then how long did it take to deploy the space utilization model? Um, I would say we were from we, from when we started it um, to really being more or less being live with it um, was probably a total of like six to eight weeks. There was some scheduling issues and obviously it competes on some key members time because of COVID, but you know, we had a lot of the data in place from the from some of the other um, models as well. So it was pretty quick. Uh, I'd say the level of effort was definitely underneath that. There was some scheduling issues just due to COVID and uh, I know uh, the Tarleton team had to do some uh, evaluations of room configurations and items like that multiple times throughout the process that, you know, not much time to be in a computer, in front of a computer reviewing um, models uh, when you have to be out uh, walking, walking, the, walking the buildings. But, you know, relatively short period of time to, from origination to deployment uh, in terms of effort. Great, thank you. The next question is from Steven. Um, he said, can you talk more about the shift in moving from traditional budgeting to a zero-based budgeting model? I can. Um, we actually, <clears throat> excuse me, when our new president um, arrived, we were, were just ready to kick off our traditional budget process. And so um, for the fiscal year 2021, which for us begins um, a little less than a month from now, um, we agreed to do a modified uh, approach to zero-based budgeting. So we only, um, we only used oper only adjusted operating budgets under that model um, and not total budgets. Um, and Curtis and his team were able to take the Excel spreadsheets that we um, have historically used and that we were modifying for that and build those into Anaplan. Unfortunately, we didn't involve them early enough and so we went ahead and completed that, um, that process through using Excel spreadsheets, but they have us all set up and ready for the next, next cycle to go uh, zero base in Anaplan. Yeah, and I wanna say the, uh... When we did get in, engaged on that, we were we tr transitioned from an incremental to a um, zero base, um, having all the templates in a, about the span of probably three weeks, I want to say. Yeah, it was pretty quick. All right, great, thanks, Lori. Um, the next question comes from John Pierce. Um, what have been the outcomes of using the contribution margin model? Has it been accepted by the academic side? So um, it, it varies by college. So we have provided reports from the contribution um, model to the deans and um, some deans were very interested in that information and used it to make some adjustments to their programs. Other deans, um, have not used it so I would say you know it varies uh, by program but I can say that our ag um, our the College of Ag particularly had a program that they completely um, reworked once they saw the the loss that was coming from that program and um, and so the information has been used to make some positive changes but I wouldn't say that it is completely accepted across the academic side. Okay, great. And then it looks like um, the last question we had is from Jerome. What are the standard data sources for the space utilization model? So here in the state of Texas, we um, the reports that we provide to the coordinating board um, are called CBM reports um, and all of that is coming out of Banner. And so we are using those reports in a CSV 
file and uploading them into Anaplan. Great, thank you, Lori. Um, at this time, there's no other questions in the chat feature or any hand raises. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Um, we appreciate your time and uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, help, help some of you out through these uh, challenging times and uh, improve your space modeling. And uh, hopefully it was great to hear from, from Tarleton um, about, about their journey and what they've done and what they've accomplished and also just what they, what they hope to accomplish in the future. Thanks a lot. Thank you.